Shalom, family. This is Elder Jenkins with the King James Bible University. And I want to speak to you on the subject, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Family, we know that we're living upon this earth in this wilderness. This is where the Most High have put us. We in this wilderness, this matrix, trying to find our way back home. We are born into this carnal state of mind. And he sent his word down out of his royal throne as a fierce man of war into a land of destruction. His word is what he sent down to transform our mind that we can be renewed we can be regenerated into a spiritual being we can go from having a carnal state of mind to having a spiritual state of mind so family we're going to go forward with this teaching once again, I'm Melda Jenkins with the King James Bible University GA, and it's called Be Ye Transformed by the Renewing of Your Mind. So we're going to start at the book of Sirach for some and Ecclesiasticus for others. And it says, the wisdom of Jesus, the son of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus. And we're going to start at the first verse. So the word reads, this is the prologue of the wisdom of Jesus, the son of, Rila of Sirach. And it reads, whereas many and great things have been delivered unto us by the law and the prophets and by others that have followed their steps. For the which things Israel ought to be commended for learning and wisdom. Whereof not only the readers must needs become skillful themselves, but also they that desire to learn be able to profit them which are without. So we got to be willing not only to learn, but also to share this knowledge, to disperse this knowledge, just as he gave it to us. He said, both by speaking and writing, my grandfather Jesus, when he had much given himself to the reading of the law, in the prophets, in other books of our fathers, and had gotten therein good judgment, was drawn on also himself to write something pertaining to learning and wisdom, to the intent that those which are desirous to learn and are addicted to these things might profit much more in living according to the law. So this is what's going on here, family. Giving us a nice backdrop or just a foundation about this brother Jesus. This is not talking about Yahweh Shai. This is talking about a brother named Jesus, the son of Sirach. So let's hit Romans. And we'll go to chapter 10. And we'll come back. In verse 1, Paul said, Brethren, my heart's desire in prayer to Yahweh for Israel is 
that they might be saved. Now we just got through seeing earlier where it was telling us how this book is for those that's about wanting to learn and have wisdom. And one, the reader must become skillful and have a desire to learn and also be able to profit those that are without. We, we just got through reading that. And also it says, this have been delivered to us by the law and the prophets and by others that have followed their steps for the which things Israel ought to be commended for learning and wisdom. That's what we read. So now he's saying, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yahweh. So he's letting us know that the Most High clearly want to be their cover. Spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But they're going about to establish their own righteousness. They want another cover. But Paul said, my heart's desire and prayer to Yahweh for Israel is that they might be saved. Matter of fact, let's show this other covering that, that we, we want to get tied into. It's just dropped in my spirit, so I'm going to show this real briefly. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 1, it says, Woe to the rebellious children, said the Spirit of God, that take counsel, but not of me, in that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt, and have not acts at my mouth, to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt, meaning the shadow of confusion. He said, therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. So this is what a lot of us have done when Paul was saying we going about to establish our own righteousness and not the righteousness of Yahweh. So let's get back to Sirach and get a little bit more. Let's see how we stopped off at. Okay, right here. So it says, wherefore, let me entreat you to read it with favor and attention and to pardon us when we may seem to come short of some words which we have labored to interpret. For the same things uttered in Hebrew and translated into another tongue have not the same force in them. And not only these things, but the law itself and the prophets and the rest of the books have no small difference when they are spoken in their own language. For in the eighth and thirtieth year coming into Egypt when uh, Urjax was king and continuing there some time, I found a book of no small learning. Therefore, I thought it most necessary for me to bestow some diligence and travail to interpret it, using great watchfulness and skill in that space to bring the book to an end and set it forth for them also, which in a strange country are willing to learn. 
See family, we are in a strange country right now. We in this strange country, we in this wilderness, where any and everything goes down under the sun. And he's telling us he set it forth for them also are willing to learn being prepared before all manners to live after the law. He said, all wisdom coming from the creator and is with him forever. So this is his spirit, Christ. This is our covering. So let's get some more. Let's go to Malachi. Malachi. Chapter 3, verse 16. He says, Then they that feared the Spirit of God speak often one to another. And the Spirit of God hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance, meaning repentance, was written before him for them that feared the Spirit of God and that thought upon his name. So this is what this book of remembrance was written for. See, it's a rock chapter six, start at the 18th verse. He says, my son, gather instruction from thy youth up, so shall thou find wisdom till thine old in other words, once he comes, he'll be with you all the way to the end. You don't have to wait a long time for it to manifest itself. That word will come and teach you all things. It will show you all things. He said, for thou shalt not toil much in laboring after her, but thou shalt learn of her fruits right soon. Let's see, another precept just popped up. Let's go over here to John 14 chapter. In the 26th verse, it says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So this is letting us know that you're not going to have to labor long at all in this seed is planted in you. You're not going to have to labor. You're not going to have to toil. He said, but thou shalt learn of her fruits right soon. She is very unpleasant to the unlearned. The unlearned don't want to have nothing to do with her or the ones that speak in her speech. He that is without understanding will not remain with her. In other words, he's going to think you talking crazy. So there's no need to entertain what you're saying because they don't get it. She will lie upon him as a mighty stone of trial. And he will cast her from him ere it be long. So just like we said, He's not going to want to have nothing to do with this spirit, this covering that comes from the Most High because he don't understand it. It's going to be a trial of stone. And the same word that can save him and give him salvation, that's going to be the one that he chooses to disobey. It's going to be the one that he chooses to give it up or sell to birthright like how Esau did. So let's let's get some more. Let's go to first Peter. 
in chapter two. Start at verse five, it says, ye also are lively stones, as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up sacrifices acceptable to God, Yahweh, by salvation, the anointed one. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling, he just showed us in Sirach chapter six, that is going to be a stone of trial. So he say, in a stone of stumbling, in a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. So this is the one when he hear the knowledge of truth being spoke, when he hear that covering being explained, which is the spirit of God, he's not going to accept it. You don't want to have anything to do with it. Let's get us some more from Sirach. And we'll start at verse 22. It says, for wisdom is according to her name, and she is not manifest unto many. Wisdom is according to her way, her path, the path of righteousness. And she is not manifest unto many. Give ear, my son, my servant. Receive my advice and refuse not my counsel. And put thy feet into her feathers and thy neck into her chain. Bow down thine shoulder and bear her and be not grieved with her bond. Come unto her with thy whole heart and keep her ways with all thy power. So in all thy strength, all thy might, all thy soul, all thy heart, keep her ways. See, this should sound real familiar to a lot of you. That's part of the university. Because we know that he's speaking nothing but the royal law. Let's look at it. Come unto her with thy whole heart and keep her ways with all thy power, meaning all thy strength. That's the role you love. Let's, let's go get it. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 10, and we'll start at verse 12. It says, And now, Israel, what do it the Spirit of God thy guide require of thee? But to fear, meaning desire the spirit of God, that guy, to walk in all his ways and to love him, meaning to promise him and to serve the spirit of God, that guy, with all thy heart and with all thy soul to keep the commandments of the spirit of God and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. So as this is giving detailed information on the same thing that we just read in Sirach 6 and 26. So let's go back. Let's get some more. Sirach chapter 6. And we'll start at verse 27. It says, search and seek. And she shall be made known unto thee. And when thou hast got hold of her, 
let her not go. So he's being very clear that we must not let this covering go. We don't want to change out this covering for another. We don't want to change out his spirit for another. We don't want to change out the good shepherd, the only shepherd for another. That's what he's telling. Let's keep going. He says, verse 28, for at the last thou shall find her rest and that shall be turned to thy joy. So it's letting us know what's going on here. When we let her not go, when we acknowledge and obey her voice, we will find that rest and it should be turned into our joy because we're going to be knowing what the knowledge of truth is we're going to know it according to his word. Let's hit Galatians chapter 5. Let's see what some of this joy is. We'll start at verse 22. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. It's no law because you're already operating within the law. That's what's going on. See Isaiah in chapter 28. Verse 10. We'll start at verse 10. It says, for Precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips in another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. So he's letting us know, family, when we obey his voice, when we do the things that he told us to do, he said, let her not go and we shall find rest and it'll be turned into our joy. It's precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and deal a little, the parables, the dark sins, the riddles, the stammering lips and an undertone, the way he speak to us a spiritual language. This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. This is the rest where we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind, by this word. So I'm only pull into this line right here where the semicolon is. That's all I want right there. That's why he says line upon line. So I can pull right to that semicolon and lift it up off the scriptures and line it up with our next precept that we're going to is uh, Sirach chapter six again, and we're going to go first 29. It says, then shall her feathers be a strong defense for thee. See, we just got through saying, when he able to cause the weary to rest because of these precepts and this stammering lips and another tongue speaking his spiritual language, he said, then shall her feathers be a strong defense. It's going to be a wall. And I change a robe of glory. For there is a golden ornament upon her, and her bands are purple lace. 
thou shalt put her on as a robe of honor. And thou, in other words, a robe of respect. He says, and shall put her about thee as a crown of joy. It says, my son, if thou will, thou shall be taught. And if thou will apply thy mind, thou shall be prudent. It says, if thou love to hear, thou shall receive understanding. And if thou bow thine ear, thou shall be wise. So he's letting us know if, if we, in verse 33, if thou promise to hear, it's what love means, promise. If thou promise to hear, thou shalt receive understanding. And if thou bow thine ear, thou shalt be wise. Stand in the multitude of the elders and cleave unto him. That is wise. Be willing to hear every godly discourse and let not the parables of understanding escape thee. And if thou seest a man of understanding, get thee betimes unto him and let thy foot wear the steps of his door. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the creator and meditate continually in his commandments. He shall establish thine heart and give thee wisdom at thine own desire. So he's telling us exactly what's going to go down. Let's hit Proverbs chapter four. Let's start at the fifth verse. He says, get wisdom, get understanding, but get it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth, not, and she shall put her, and she shall keep thee. This is what she's going to do. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Letting us know wisdom is the principal thing. So we're going to go at Proverbs chapter 8 and we'll start at verse 5. It says, O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Here, for I will speak of excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth. And wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understand it. And right to them that find knowledge, receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear, meaning the desire of the spirit of God is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy. In the evil way, in the froward mouth, do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me. In other words, 
I promise them that promise me. And those that seek me early shall find me. So he's letting us know that the ones that will seek him early shall find him. Let's hit Wisdom of Solomon chapter one. We start at the sixth verse. Say, for wisdom is a loving spirit, just that covering, and will not acquit a blasphemer of his words. For Yahweh is witness of his rings and a true beholder of his heart and a hearer of his tongue. For the spirit of the creator filleth the world and that which containeth all things have knowledge of the voice. Therefore, he that speaketh unrighteous things cannot be hid, neither shall vengeance when it punish pass by him. For inquisition shall be made into the counsels of the ungodly, and the sound of his words shall come unto the creator for the manifestation of his wicked deeds. For the ear of jealousy heareth all things, and the noise of murmurings is not here. Therefore, beware of murmuring, which is unprofitable, and refrain your tongue from backbiting, for there is no word so secret that shall go for naught, and the mouth that belieth slayed the soul. Seek not death, in the era of your life and pull not upon yourselves destruction with the works of your hands. He's being crystal clear here what he's telling us to do. We're going to hit Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 and verse 11. It says, for whoso despises wisdom and nurture, he is miserable. He's letting us know this person is miserable and their hope is vain their labor is unfruitful and their works unprofitable let's go up to verse 10 but the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations which have neglected the righteous and forsaken the creator this is what they have done 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 20. He said, but I say that the things which the Gentiles, which the heathen sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to Yahweh. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils, with heathens, with Gentiles. Ye cannot drink the cup of the creator and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the creator's table and of the table of devils. Devils, you cannot do these things. He's telling us what's going down. So let's go here after he told us this information. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. And it says in verse one, I beseech you, I beg of you, therefore, for that reason, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Yahweh, which is your reasonable service. In other words, he want us to be blameless and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh. The only way we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind, family, is through the word of God. The only way we can be cleansed is through the word of God. The only way that our 
crooked ways could be made straight is through the word of God. Matter of fact, another precept just popped up in my spirit. We're going to share that one. Let's go to, um, uh, let's see, where is it? John chapter 15 and verse 3. It says, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. This is Christ speaking. The only way we're going to be cleansed in a spiritual meaning for being clean is being ye transformed by the renewing of our minds. We are clean through the word. He said, every branch in me that bear not fruit, he take it away. And every branch that bear fruit, he purge it that it may bring forth more fruit. It's Christ speaking. Be clean through this word. Let's hit the book of Psalms. And we'll go to 121. The first verse says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence come at my help. We know this help is the same covering we're talking about. He said, my help coming from the spirit of God, Christ, which made heaven and earth. Let's get a little bit more. Psalms. 96, one through five, he say, oh, sing unto the spirit of God a new song. Sing unto the spirit of God all the earth. Sing unto the spirit of God. Bless his name, his way. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. In other words, declare his glory among the Gentiles. For the spirit of God is great and greatly to be praised. We're going to be given our confessions among the heathen as to what he is doing in our lives, the journey that we was on and the reason why he put us here to learn how to act in the kingdom. It says, for he is to be feared above all gods, all idols, that's what it's saying. He said, for all the gods of the nations, these other nations are idols. The seizure Borgers. All of these images, you even got some images of a black man. You got these images that people make. He told us not to paint any images or bow down to any images. We already know that Yahweh Shah was a brother. We already know he was a Hebrew. We already know what tribe he came through. We already know he was an Israelite. So why do you have to paint an image? Why do you have to have an image for you to point somebody to? We already know who his father and mother was, Joseph and Mary. We already know these things. So why do you have to have an a image? He said, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but the spirit of God made the heavens. What's going down? Let's get a little bit more. Let's go to the book of Baruch, chapter four. We'll start at the fifth verse. 
It reads, be of good cheer, my people, the memorial of Israel. Ye were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because ye moved Yahweh to wrath, ye were delivered unto the enemies. See, if you want to write a song, why don't you write or sing one of these songs? Why don't you give them some praise with these confessions, with these testimonies? You want to sing a song? He said, for ye provoke him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to God. We just got to show you in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 20 and 21, that the Gentiles sacrificed unto devils. And he told us not to keep company following after their ways. Verse 8, he says, ye have forgotten the everlasting God that brought you up, and ye have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. For when she saw the wrath of God coming upon you, she said, hearken, O ye that dwell about Zion. Yahweh have brought upon me great mourning, for I saw the captivity of my sons, and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them. This is wisdom speaking. With joy did I nourish them, but sent them away with weeping and mourning. Let no man rejoice over me, a widow and forsaken of many. For the sins of my children am left desolate because they departed from the law of Yahweh. See, once we depart from doing the will of the Most High, his spirit have to depart. It have to flee. Because we chose to depart from the law of God. He says, for who for the sins of my children am left desolate. Wasn't because of nothing wisdom did, our covering did, it's because the sins of us. This is what's going down. Verse 13, they knew not his statutes, nor walked in the ways of his commandments, nor trod in the paths of discipline in his righteousness. Let them that dwell about Zion, come and remember the activity of my sons and daughters. But you have a nation who neither reverence old men nor pity child. I'm going to read that verse 15 again. It says, for he have brought a nation upon them from far, a shameless nation and of a strange language who neither reverence old men nor pity child. These have carried away the dear beloved children of the widow and left her that was alone, desolate, without daughters. But what can I help you? For he that brought these plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemy. Go your way, O oh my children. Go your way, for I am left desolate. I have put off the clothing of peace, this covering, and put upon me the sackcloth of my prayer. I will cry unto the everlasting in my days. Wow. This is what wisdom did. It says, be of good cheer, O my children. Cry unto the creator 
and he will deliver you from the power, the strength and hands of the enemies. For my hope is in the everlasting, that he will save you. This is the same thing that Paul said, his desire and prayer was that Israel be saved. He said, and joy is come unto me from the Holy One because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting our Savior. So he's telling us about some mercy that's been promising to us. He said, for I sent you out with mourning and weeping, but Yahweh will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. In other words, he's going to give the ones that's obedient that crown. The crown of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That's what's going on. He said, like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity. So shall they see shortly your salvation from our God, which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that is come upon you from your house. For thine enemy have persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck. My delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as a flock caught of the enemies. Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto Yahweh, for he shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. For as it was your mind to go astray from God, so being returned, seek him ten times more. For he that have brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. Take a good heart, O Jerusalem, for he that gave thee that name will comfort you. He's letting us know. He called us by his name. He sat down his word. He will comfort us. There's no doubt about it. Let's get some more over in Malachi. Let's see here. Malachi chapter 3. Let's see here. Here we go. And we go at verse 17. It says, And they shall be mine, said the Spirit of God of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spared his own son that served him. See, family, we starting to see this mercy take place right in Scripture. It's his mercy. He said, I will spare them. He didn't say I will destroy them. He said, I will spare them. This is his mercy and action. Verse 18, then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. This is what you're going to do. Between him that serveth Yahweh and him that serveth him not. This is what's going now. You're going to be able to discern between the two. Let's get some more Baruch chapter four. Let's see here. We're going to go at verse 31. 
It says, miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoice at thy fall. Miserable are the cities which thy children serve. Miserable is she that receive thy sons. So where we was doing free labor for over 400 years. Serving and working in the cotton fields and getting given free labor, not giving it, it was taken. It says, For as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad at thy fall so shall she be grieved for her own desolation. For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude and her pride shall be turned into mourning. For fire shall come upon her from the everlasting, this truth coming long to endure, and she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. Let's see here. I just want this to stick for a minute. See, for I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude. All of the rejoicing and pomp. All of the getting over, I'm going to take that away. And our pride shall be turned into mourning, for a fire shall come upon her from the everlasting. Long to endure, and she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. O Jerusalem, look about thee toward the east. And behold the joy that cometh unto thee from Yahweh. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. They come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One. Keep in mind, we showed earlier in John, the 15th chapter, in verse 3. We are clean through the word. We are transformed by the word. We are renewed, regenerated by the word. I say rejoicing in the glory of God, Yahweh. Let's hit another one. Second and Dries, chapter 16. We'll start at verse 73. Let's see verse 73. It says, Then shall they be known who are my chosen. And they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. Hear, O ye, my beloved, my promised ones, said the Creator. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt. For Yahweh is your guide. God is your guide. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, said the creator God. Let not your sins weigh you down and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins. And covered 
with their iniquities, you covering with another covering, but not of the most high spirit. Like as a field is covered over with bushes and the path thereof covered with thrones that no man may travel through. It is left undressed and is cast into the fire to be consumed therewith. So family, he's being very clear and I'm gonna bring this scripture up once again in Isaiah 30. So we can be crystal clear about this cover. He said, woe to the rebellious children, said the spirit of God that take counsel, but not of me. And that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. That walk to go down into Egypt in confusion and have not acts at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. He's being crystal clear. Crystal clear. As we come back to this verse here. He said, woe be unto them that are bound with their sins and covered with their iniquities like as a field is covered over with bushes and the path thereof covered with thorns that no man may travel through. How are you going to get through that straight and narrow path? Straight is the gate and narrow is the way. Second and Dries even tried to help us out. Let's see here if I can Pull it right quick. Chapter seven. He said, and I said, speak on my God. Then said he unto me, the sea is set in a wide place that it might be deep and great. But put the case, the entrance were narrow and like a river. Who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it. If he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? So he's telling us, how are you gonna be able to do it? He said, there is also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall. Like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left, a deep water. And one only path between them both, even between the fire and the water so small that there could be one man go there at once. So my question is, if it's filled up, covered up with bushes and thorn, thorns that no man can even go through the path, how you expect to get through this small entrance? This is something for you to meditate on. He said, if this city now were given unto a man for inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? If you got bushes and thorns that's covering the path, blocking the path where well, you can't get through, how can you expect to receive this inheritance? He said, and I said, 
It is so. Creator, then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. And you see that apostrophe S, so it's showing that this is pertaining to the house of Israel. He said, because for their sakes, I made the world. And when Adam transgressed, my statues, then was the decree that now is done. He said, then were the interests of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. For the interests of the elder world were wide and sure and brought immortal fruit. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, they can never receive those things that are laid up for them. So family, we want to meditate on this word. We want to allow Christ to be our shepherd and our guide. Allow him to lead us in a pathway of righteousness. And most of all, we want to be ye transformed by the renewing of our mind, family. By the renewing of our mind. So I hope and pray that someone was able to get something from his teaching to help you along the way, knowing that wisdom is very important attribute to have, the wisdom of the most high. We don't want to let her go. This is our covering. So I hope you have a wonderful Sabbath as we begin in this Sabbath. You enjoy it and meditate and just keep it holy. And I'm going to say a shalom to everyone. This is Elder Jenkins signing out. Shalom.